Welcome to the channel and today we're going to discuss the Tyndall effect in the anterior chamber along with how currents are formed in the anterior chamber in this condition of anterior uveitis. Here let's see a picture in which you can see there is light shining in the forest and there is scattering of the light by small suspended particles of dust in, a, in, in the air making the light beam visible. So this is something which is also seen in patients with anterior uveitis as well. And here you can see a patient with anterior uveitis in which you will see that uh, there is effect of this Tyndall effect in which with, if I play this video you can see cells in the anterior chamber. There is these small particles of cells which you see floating over here. These are cells which are in the anterior chamber and they are scattering the light and you can see this light is broadly visible. If we make the light smaller in size then probably we'll be able to see that flare which we call which, which you see as that streak of light which goes from the cornea to the anterior chamber. I think it is pertinent to note over here that the light needs to be shown in a particular way to make that uh, cells more visible and the way is to get that light to shine on the cornea and tilt it one side and then put that other beam just on the other side of the on the edge of the iris either on the nasal side or the temporal side so this was on the temporal side of the iris and make that beam slightly uh, narrow go on to higher magnification and increase the intensity so those are the things if you're taking an exam the examiner wants to see that you have increased the magnification if you increase the light intensity to see that cells in the anterior chamber in patients with uveitis and obviously you know you the grading of cells in the anterior chamber so if you see in this patient that the cells which you see in the anterior chamber are quite a lot and you need to get that beam down to 2 millimeters and then count the number of cells in that area. Crossly you see there's a lot of cells in this area over here which you're seeing. So probably this will go into grade 3 or grade 4 uveitis which you see in this patient. If you go forward just to look what the blood aqueous barrier is. If you just focus on this area of the eye which is the ciliary body. So you can see this is the area which is the pars plicata and the area at the back which joins the retina is, is the pars plana. And if we take a closer look at the structure of the pars plicata, what we'll see is there is the fenestrated capillaries over here. Then you've got the ciliary body which has got the non-pigmented epithelial cells and the pigmented epithelial cells. So what happens if you break these tight junctions in the uh, in these pigmented and non-pigmented epithelium and the tight junctions in the capillaries as well. So let's see if we have got white blood cells which are going through these blood vessels. If we break this barrier over here, the tight junctions which happens in the anterior uveitis, these cells are going to go and move into the anterior chamber and that is why we see cells and also proteins. The cells will show up as cells but the proteins will show up as flare or that uh, scattering of light which you see as a beam of light which you shine in the patients with anterior uveitis. And let's look for, see another phenomenon which happened in patients with anterior uveitis and that phenomenon is the convection currents which happen in the cornea. If you compare the cornea as a cooler structure which is uh, cool like this and if you compare the iris as a hot structure because it's a vascular supply. You will see that the cells are moving in a current and they move downward in the corneal area and they move rise in the area of the iris. So this is the convection current which happens in a circle over, over here and that is why the KPs which are formed or the pigment which deposits in the anterior chamber is in the inferior part because this is where the cornea is where it is cooler in this side. So thank you very much for watching this video on uveitis. Hope you like it and see you again.